Jack Daniels 12 year batch one versus batch two. Let's go. Welcome to Average Joe's Whiskey. My name is Joe. Another video today that I am actually very excited about. We are gonna be blinding Jack Daniels 12 year batch one. One of my favorite bottles from last year against Jack Daniels 12 year batch two. Now I've heard a lot of mixed things about this Jack Daniels 12 year batch two. Some people seem to love it. A lot of people say it's not as good as last year. We're gonna compare them as fairly as we possibly can in a blind. And just for fun, we're gonna throw in Old Forester 1924. Another bottle I've been dying to try and recently got my hands on. And just for even more fun, we're gonna throw in Jack Daniels Bonded. So the Jack Daniels 12 years are about $90 retail, but you will regularly see these marked up to like 200, 250, 3, 350. Crazy numbers. And the 1924 has the highest MSRP of the bunch. This one sells for $115. But I've seen this bottle marked up to like $300 as well. And of course, Jack Daniels Bonded, you can get for like 35 bucks, basically anywhere in the country. This one comes in at 100 proof, aged about seven years. 1924, also 100 proof. This one's aged 10 years. And the Jack Daniels 12 year coming at 107 proof, obviously aged for 12 years. Who is gonna win this Brown Foreman showdown? I don't know. Let's find out. I poured all of these about 15 minutes ago. They are all sitting right behind me here. So they've had plenty of time to get some air and to open up. All right. Now I'm gonna do the thing where I speed up the camera and mix them up. All right, there we go. I am really excited for this blind. I have not tried the Jack Daniels 12 year batch two. This is gonna be my first time. First time trying it is gonna be blind. So I'm very curious to see how it does. Uh, I had a couple pours of the 1924, but I have not really dove into it. Haven't really compared it to anything else. So this is gonna be the first time for that too. And if the Jack Daniels Bonded wins, then I'm going to have to give my YouTube channel away to a homeless person. All right, let's light this rocket. Ooh. Well, class number one smells good. It's got oak. It's got banana. It's like an oaky uh, banana nut bread. I feel like it's got some barrel char too. More than just like your typical sweet oak. It's more of like a barrel char oak. All right, glass two. Glass two's a lot lighter. Glass two doesn't have nearly as much oak. Uh, it does have some banana notes, but more of like a light brown sugar. Glass three. Mm. Glass three smells amazing. Yeah, glass three is, uh, that's my type of nose. That is just a sweet, vanilla oak all day long man yeah glass three smells the best so far glass four Ooh. yeah so glass number four has some oak not as much as glasses one and three but it definitely has some oak it has some banana too, but it's not, it's more of like a, not a green banana, but a not super ripe banana. And some vanilla. It smells pretty good. If I had to guess what they were right now, which is not the point of this, so I probably shouldn't, but I'm thinking this is batch two, bonded, batch one, 1924. That's my first inclination. But the point of this is not to guess. The point of this is just to rank them, best to worst. 
So whatever theories I have in my head, I'm gonna put those aside and just go through and taste. All right, glass number one. I like that. I like that a lot. That is like a big mouthful of caramel and brown sugar. Super thick, excellent mouthfeel. Let's try it again. Got some nice sweet oak on the finish. The oak is a little bit dry, but I'm really nitpicking there. Like it's, it's an excellent whiskey. All right, let's move on to glass two. Yeah, it's got a nice sweet nose. It's just not on the level of these others. I probably shouldn't have put the bonded in here. <laughs> it really stands out. I don't think we need a second sip of that one, actually. Why don't I move it up there? All right, glass number three. Oh my God. Glass three smells so good. This is like a knock you on your ass nose. What an amazing finish too. Glass number three has a finish like fireworks exploding in your mouth. Like it. It's crazy, crazy good. Let's go one more sip here. Yeah, that one's just caramel, vanilla. It's got a nice like maple syrup note to it, which you kind of get on the finish as well. The finish kind of gives you a little kick of spice, which is not really something you expect from any of these bottles. So that's kind of a nice surprise, but some nice sweet oak and that maple syrup note shows up on the finish too. Glass four. Mm. It smells good. Glass number four is really good too. Doesn't just take over your mouth like some of these others. Man. But it's got a nice sweet oak on the nose. It had a great mouth feel. It's got like a really nice creme brulee or banana split flavor. It's really I hate this word, but it's really smooth. Like nice thick mouthfeel, nothing wrong with it, just not quite as interesting. So I think we're down to these two. All right. All right, let's go back to glass three. Glass three just smells amazing. It's just such a beautiful, sweet oak nose. This is what bourbon should smell like. All right, Tennessee whiskey, excuse me. But that is just a beautifully aged Tennessee whiskey. The palette is excellent but the finish is phenomenal. Like you have flavors pop up after you swallow it. Like it's crazy. 
and it's still going. Just a perfect finish on glass number three. All right, back to glass number one. Glass number one smells excellent too. These two have a very similar nose. I think glass three leaps out of the glass a little bit more than glass number one does. Although glass one may have a little bit more complexity. Like there's some burnt, maybe like a burnt caramel in there. I don't know if it's more complex, but it's it's got some interesting notes to it at least. All right, let's try it again. So it does have that caramel brown sugar that I mentioned earlier. It's got some really nice cherry notes, like a really sweet dark cherry. It's a little more astringent too, like not in a bad way, but it dries your palate a little bit on the finish, but it does it in a way that I don't mind it. Like it's not, it's not a bad finish at all. Let's try it again. It's astringent in the way that it feels like it almost sticks to your tongue, which is nice actually, because the flavors are so good. Like you want it to stick to your tongue. All right, back to three. If these are the two Jack Daniels 12 years, which I suspect that they are, they're actually more similar than I thought they would be. But I think, I think glass number three just has a little bit more, I don't even know what the right word is. Yeah, the finish is just so long and so dominant. I don't even know if that makes sense. But there's just nothing wrong with this. Like, it's sweet all the way through, but it's interesting. Like, you have that really nice oak, you have the vanilla, the caramel, and then that flavor explosion on the finish with the sweet oak. It, like, it's, it's crazy. There's nothing with glass number three that I think could even be perceived as a flaw. Whereas glass number one, if you, if you don't like that astringency of the oak, then uh, that might be a little bit of a turnoff for some people. I don't really see how. It's still delicious, but yeah. I'm gonna go with glass number three as your winner. Glass number one in second place, glass number four in third place, and glass number two in last. Let's try glass number four again real quick. Yeah. Glass number four is really, really good. It's just not on the same level as these others. And glass number two really didn't even deserve to be in this. Sorry, Jack Daniels bonded. I don't know what I was thinking, but all right, let's find out what they are. If this is not the bonded, then I am a complete fraud. Yes. Thank God. Glass number four is the bonded. So in last place, Jack Daniels bonded, probably didn't really deserve to be in this blind. Coming in third place, we have the Old Forester 1924. Two for two so far. Coming in second place, I'm pretty sure this is the batch two. Batch number two, Jack Daniels 12 year. And your winner and champion Jack Daniels 12 year, batch number one. God, this is such an amazing bottle. Based on what I'd heard about batch two, I thought it might be more different than they actually are. Like, I think they're pretty close. I do think the batch one is a little bit better. Batch one is like, batch one is just exceptional, exceptional whiskey. Batch number two is, it's really great, but I think batch one is just going to appeal to more people. Like there's really nothing not to like about it. It's pretty crazy. And then 1924, pretty good. Um, 
but at $115 retail, it just doesn't hold up to either of the Jack Daniels 12 years, not even close. And Bonded is great, you know, for 35 bucks, great whiskey, but noticeably worse than everything else here. All right, well, this has been a spectacularly fun blind. Got to drink some excellent whiskey. Thank you guys for taking the time to watch. If you haven't subscribed, please go ahead and do that. A lot of great content on the way. And if you haven't hit the like button, please hit that on your way out the door. Thanks for watching. Have a good night.